Welcome to another VI Publisher video. Today we are going to look at how we can edit a pivot table. So currently I'm inside my template. This happens to be a long paper uh, size that I'm using as my template only because it makes it a lot easier to extract data in uh, to Excel. So first things first guys, we connect our data source. Now, we're going to use the pivot table wizard to quickly insert a pivot table with some specified fields or columns that we want to show. So I'm just selecting a few here. I want name. I'm going to put the term at the top. This is going to be used to span out the headings and do the relevant aggregation based on units taken per entity. I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of columns here. One, two, three. Or one more and let's go add another one. Oh, so there we go there you have it there's a limit to the number of columns that you can add to your pivot table in VI publisher um, just gonna go ahead and customize my layout a little bit here uh, I don't want to show any subtotals so our issue is that we want to add an additional two columns to this pivot table and the wizard does not have the capacity to do so thus we are going to turn to the customizing or customization functionality within our template. So this is the pivot table that we generated really quickly again. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead, show you what that looks like in Excel. There you go. Pretty basic, right? Concatenating and merging some data and then aggregating it, spanning it over term codes. Now, a few things here. We need to edit a whole bunch of fields in order to go ahead and add two new columns, right? We start by adding those columns in there in the table using native word functionality. And if you want, go ahead and edit the, um, the shading. So I just removed that shading of gray there because I just want the, the gray to be at the last column only. So there are multiple fields that we inserted automatically using the wizard process. The very first row is what is known as a column context. That determines the number of columns in our table. All rows need to use something called cell context to create the table cells for the column. Now you see all the names here, these are the fields that we inserted, right? The, the rows or the columns. Now after this very first semicolon at the end, um, that's a separator, that's indicating the following, that these two final columns are what we are going to be using in order to pivot our data. You can also change the aggregation here if you want, from sum to count or count to sum. Um, and granted, there are only two options here. It's either sum or count. So you can, we'll just stick with our previous selection of sum. Cancel out. All right, now, the fields that I want to add to this pivot table are probably going to be expression 18 and expression 21. Um, I know that's not very native. It's not native language that I'm using here, but you can go ahead and you can edit the, the field names in your underlying data source. For now, I'm just going to add those two in, and I know I want them to appear right before the final column before the aggregation. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to edit all of these headings, change it to something a little more generic. It'll actually help me counting. Uh, it'll help me to count because the the numbering of these headings is going to serve us a little later when we are going to start editing the row numbers. You'll, you'll see that pretty soon. Okay, we're going to leave name as name. And that, that is done. And checking the fields. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up that C field again, the column context field. All right. And I see that the two new columns that I added manually are not in here. So I'm going to have to go and directly input them, right? So before I do that, just some information here for you. Um, the columns are right after the row element. Um, this is the syntax for the entire XDO command code. And I have provided you with some details as to every single uh, piece or code within this field. Uh, free to pause this and read read it earlier. Um, all right, so let's open up the XDO command again and start editing a few things. 
So we're going to start by copying the contents and then pasting them into a new notepad file. This is going to make things easier in terms of editing. Okay, let me just open that back up because I accidentally clicked on my RTF template. Okay, so let's go ahead and add expression 18 and expression 21 fields in there. Uh, do make a note of the syntax here. This is important because everything, anything that we add is going to have to be right before that semicolon. So let's start typing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add that field in there. Make sure that I follow the syntax. Copy and paste this important necessary code at the end of that field, followed by a comma. Let's go ahead and put that second new field in there. The additional code. There we go. That is looking good. Now copy everything onto your clipboard. I'm going to paste that back into our command code. All right. I'm going to paste it underneath the original code. Just want to double check a couple of things here. I'm going to have you with it. I'm going to delete the previous code. Leave that in there. It's looking good. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the H field. H is standing for horizontal break. And then ACC code. Just checking here. We will need to update this to number seven because we currently have a total of seven columns. Okay, so these are the first three items that we have updated. So there are numerous G fields. G stands for grouping. They display the, um, the level of column heading. So you'll need to add the G to items five and six, those new columns as well, right? No need to add anything to the very last column, which is right underneath the um, aggregation level fields. You can leave those as they are. Um, apart from this one, you need to replace it um, with the seven because there are a total of seven columns. All right, now notice that the last column G, it's not followed by the RS, just like the previous rows are. You're going to notice that when you enter your RTF template yourself. So we do need to fix something though. I did notice something off the bat here. That last column, EXPR separation, uh, it needs to be switched inside our code. It's got to be at the very end. So it's got to jive with the table contents that we have in that pivot table or else it's not going to function properly. You're actually going to get these weird Java, cryptic <laughs> Java um, messages. So go ahead and, and make that change there. It's good that we have, that we're making errors along the way because you might come across this yourself. There we go. That's better. Okay. Double checking a few things. Now let's move on. Opening up that very first G. And the G again, it's associated with, associated with the individual row fields. See, the R value stands for row. Uh, go ahead and open RS. I'm just going through these. Um, these are actually, this is code that you don't need to change because it was there already pre-built and the columns that we did not have to update. Oh, battery level is low. I got to change my mouse. Batteries, there we go. That's what that was about. <laughs> okay, double checking the RS here for the second column. R2, all right, I'll leave that as is. Those things just to you know double check my sanity. <laughs> All right, so let's start. We're gonna go ahead and add the G and the RS fields in our items five and six. All you do is copy and paste from the previous fields and then open up the dialog box and just update the row numbers, right? So item number five is position. six, copy and paste those two fields, open everything up, change R2 to R6, open up that RS field as well and update the R2 to row six, click OK. All right, now, remember no RS field is needed after the G field 
in the last column, but you do need to update that row number, 287. Click OK. Maybe we should try running the data now, right? Yep, there we go. We just updated our pivot table to include additional columns, and that worked. Thank you for watching.